They kind of look like a face. Now I can't unsee that. Hello everyone and welcome back to our 1.20 adventure. For today's episode, I was sniffing, I mean thinking that we don't have an iron farm yet and that's one thing that I keep on having to go down in the caves to go get and it would just be a lot easier if I just, well made an iron farm. So that's one of the things that we're going to work on today. I also want to go and actually look for some bees. In FreeCam, I absolutely love looking from an aerial view how our area is transforming over time, and I think that adding some bees to bring some life would just be great. But before we get started with any of that, I have something to show you guys, and I know a lot of you really like this skin, but we've had it covered up by armor for so long, and guess what? That's right, I finally got a mod that hides my armor so that I can just have my cute little kimono, but I will still be wearing my full set of diamond armor with our little armor trims but you don't get to see it. You just see the cute vibes. And if anyone is interested in getting this mod added to their world, check the description below the video because I added them there. So now we can continue preparing for today's episode in just our little kimono. I first need to figure out where the heck I want to build it. And I think because we have our skelly farm over on this side of the bridge that I want to kind of start making this be our farming area. And I also want to have the roof colors and tones be similar. So with our skelly farm right here along this side of the path, I was kind of thinking it could be cool to add our iron farm on this side of the path and do a similar little pagoda and use our green bamboo wood because I feel like it's a really cool wood block, but we don't get to use it very much because, well, Mojang only made full blocks, they didn't make slabs of the green bamboo, and uh, I am a little bit sad about that because I would love to use the slabs and stairs in the green bamboo. But alas, we will build with full blocks because we can, and we're gonna put the little iron farm right in here. I think this will be great, and then we'll just have a really nice path that we're going to add in today in between both of these builds, and we're gonna also so clean up this path specifically right here. All of these vines just keep on growing down on the path and sometimes I accidentally climb the vines instead of just jumping up the, the full blocks. So super fun. So we are going to clean up this path, make our iron farm and go on an adventure to find some bees and just do a general kind of path cleanup of our area because one very simple way to make your whole area come together is actually adding paths and lighting to make everything more cohesive. So we're gonna do a little bit of that on this side of things. So I'm just going to collect some supplies to build everything up that we'll need for today. So I'll just come back with you guys once we have everything that we need brought over to our area. Area. All right, everyone, I have the majority of the supplies we'll need to make the iron farm. We just need to go collect one bucket of lava and another bucket of water. And then we're going to go and put together the iron farm itself. And then we're going to go look for a zombie to hopefully wear some armor. And then we're going to go back to our village and we're actually going to boat some villagers over here and we'll see how that goes. I have a feeling it'll be a pain in the butt, but I mean, it's, it's villagers. Like, would you expect anything less? So even though it's raining outside, we're gonna go find ourselves some lava and grab some water from our little river here really quick and hopefully be good to go. So I grabbed a bucket of water, then grabbed a bucket of lava and got the advancement hot stuff. All right, now we have everything we need to start building this little iron farm up. And I'm actually using a different tutorial than I usually have used for my iron farm. So you can check the link in the description to see the iron farm tutorial that I'm following this time. The main difference between the iron farm tutorial I'm following this time is it's going to be underground completely. Usually the one that I choose has the iron golem spawning on top. It's kind of like floating up in the air, but I'm gonna try one where everything happens underground. Now I do need to make sure that if there's caves nearby that I do uh, spawn proof those in case iron golems would spawn in there instead. So keep that in mind if you make this in your own world. Now as far as how we're making the design of the pagoda that goes on top, I'm gonna keep it very similar to this, but I might use dark oak to edge this, just because we've been using dark oak for a lot of other things in our build, so I think that will look good. But I might mess around with changing out dark oak for the edges of the trim, but the size of it's probably going to be pretty similar. So we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we're just gonna make it go all the way through here. Yeah, I think this will be good. And it gives us lots of space, making a little pagoda for our iron farm. I like it. Let's get building. No, no, thank you. Goodness, no, no, no. J j don't go by the bed. Oh, there we go. Finally on water in our bamboo raft, moving our villager over so uh, uh, they can be terrified the rest of their life. You know, dealing with villagers in Minecraft, it always makes you feel a little bit sad you know, if you actually think about it, like, I'm gonna put this dude in a hole with two other people and perpetually scare them so that they have somebody else that protects them spawn in to save them, and I'm going to burn that person. Sometimes Minecraft, if you think about it, is a little bit deep and it's a little, uh, little dark, but we're, we're just gonna ignore it. You know, uh, we're, it's, it's for the greater good. It's for the advancement of our area. And, um, yep. We're just gonna go with that. All right, so we got our dude. We've got their lectern, and I'm first going to figure out the path that we're going to bring this person on to bring them all the way up. And hopefully we can create a pretty straight path. I am gonna use blocks to help me get through because, well, this is, oh yeah, this is our lush cave. There's our little bamboo house. Yeah, that don't want that, okay. So I think what I wanna do is just work our way through here. There's a little skeleton conversation happening there. Oh no, I looked at the Enderman. Hi, bud. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, bro, just come here. Come here. Let me tickle your toes. Yep, let me tickle them. Just a little, little toe tickle. Yep, come on. All the way down. You got it. Yep. Well, I'll take three pearls. We do need to start getting pearls just because we will eventually go and find the stronghold and fight the dragon and all that. So I'll take the pearls. But back to what I was saying, we're just going to work our way through the jungle here, clearing a nice little path, making it as straightforward as possible. All right, we connected up our little dirt bridge to fully go past our giant ravine and bring our little friend all the way into their forever home. I'm gonna get rid of some of these bamboo bits just in case it interferes with the boat and same with some of these leaves because we're not going to risk it. And we've got a little friend. <gasps> Oh, it's a sick one. Okay, quick detour. I need this dude very badly. Hi, little dude. Oh, look at your little sick face. You're so cute, but you need a Kleenex, yeah. Oh, look at your little sad face, buddy. I'm so sorry, that's no fun. Here, have a boat, yeah. Can I give him bamboo from here? <gasps> yeah, oh wow, I didn't know they could sit in the boats and eat. 
yeah, look at the little guy. He's so cute. Oh, I love them. Okay, but enough distractions. Now that we have our panda, I, I do want to start collecting one by one the different types of pandas and breeding them up because I definitely plan to have a panda sanctuary in our bamboo jungle area. Because if I didn't, like, am I even building in a bamboo jungle? So what I'm going to do is place their lectern there and then we're going to bring them closer so that they can see their little lectern and crawl up the shoreline. Okay, so now we've got two of our villagers, which is great. Mending and uh, breaking. I, I like it. So now we just are gonna go and grab our villager that's in the hole and, well, bring them to a, a different hole. Um, I feel a little bit bad about that, but you know, it's, it's fine. Okay, now I just get you to go in the hole. Let me just, excuse me, can you not face through me? Can you just move? If I just like keep blocking you in, you won't have very many choices. No, 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 this is just me, no, no, no. No, you don't need to be scared. There's water at the bottom, you're fine. Okay, fine, we'll do it this way. All the way down. There we go, ha <laughs> ha. Outsmarting the villagers with water. Also, I love the jungle villager shoes. Like, look at those little sandals. They kind of look like a face. Now I can't unsee that. The next phase is to work on the iron golem portion of this iron farm, so let's get into building that up. Next, we prepared the drop shoe for the zombie to plop down into his spot and created some walls so the iron golem wouldn't attack him. Next, we dug up to the surface, and then we went out at night to find ourselves a zombie. Yep, I don't want you around. Found ourselves a second zombie and kept dropping objects for them to try to pick them up. Okay, I don't wanna kill you if you don't wear them, but I might have to kill you if you don't wear them. And then we had to kill them because they weren't picking up anything and we wanted ones that do pick them up to actually spawn. Then we spent the day at our skelly farm with our kaiken blade, just getting some XP while we waited for the next night cycle. On the third zombie we found, this one was holding a shovel and for whatever reason, at that moment, I was so excited that they were holding something because they wouldn't despawn, which I, I figured out is incorrect, but that's a that's a later on episode red thing. Then we got the zombie trapped in our box, and we started setting up the box over by the drop chute to get our zombie to go down, and eventually, once we had it all set up, we led our zombie over to it, and after a little bit of persuasion with a water bucket, they finally went down the chute. All right, now we can get rid of our little monstrosity. I am gonna leave that block there just to signify where our zombie did go in, just so I remember where it is in case we need to ever replace our little dude. And me saying that we need to replace this dude was in fact 100% foreshadowing. 
Now that our zombie was in place, we went down our ladder to go clean up the drop chute that we had created to continue creating the iron farm. Put the chests in place, then added the hopper, and tested to make sure it was working and continued with the process. The next step was to add the signs in, and I would recommend to put the signs in place first before you add the water because you can clearly see I was struggling. And that was perfect timing to show you guys the uh, iron farm in action. It's it's working great. So far, I'm, I'm happy with this. Let's do a 10 minute AFK session to see what we can get in 10 minutes. So I'm going to grab this iron out and start a timer right now for 10 minutes. I just wanted to take this time to say thank you guys so much for all the support on our 1.20 series so far. It makes me really happy to see all of your comments just saying how much you're enjoying this. You like the cozy vibes, you like the Japanese inspired vibes and that we're building with the bamboo wood palette. I've had a lot of fun with it as well, but I'd love for you guys to let me know in the comments what other builds you think would be super fun for us to add to this world, so let me know. All right, it has been 10 minutes, and here's what we get in just 10 minutes, 45. And there was an iron golem that tried to spawn right here. So we're gonna go get carpet so that we can lay carpet down and not have any of the golems trying to spawn down here. So now we're gonna go grab some carpet and then add that down to spawn proof the floors. And I think I had carpet either in one of these chests. Here we go. Perfect, so we've got some carpet here. So let's add some carpet down there and we should be good to go now. Okay, and I'm gonna spawn proof the floor right here. All the stairs, this whole section, add some more carpet and then we'll just close up the spot and we should be good to go. All right, the iron farm is officially working so we can move to phase two, which is collecting the resource blocks and making our little iron farm pagoda. So let's get into it. A few moments later. So I was just dropping off some stuff when I noticed it's oddly quiet down here and I have a feeling that the zombie despawned. Yeah, uh, that's a rip. I thought that if he had the shovel in his hand because he was holding an item, he wouldn't despawn. But I guess if they spawn with the item in their hand, they can despawn, but if they pick up something from me, they won't despawn. Then it was back to setting up our drop chute so that a zombie could go back down into the spot. Next, we went out at night to try to get another zombie to pick up the helmet, and this one didn't want to either, so eventually, after trying to throw him blocks, we, uh, we had to kill this one. Okay, you're not the one wearing a helmet that I had in mind. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, wow, they're really spawning now. Okay, who's gonna pick up the hat or items? Yeah? All right, let's try this. If I just stand here, ooh. Okay, if I stand here. One of you should pick that up. If there's a horde, we have to have the chance of it. Or some dirt blocks, how about that? Will you, any of you pick up anything? They did not pick up anything. All right, I guess I'm just collecting your XP until your friends come by. Well, we didn't have any luck with that group that uh, spawned here, but we were able to find a wandering trader stopping by, except there's nothing that I'm super interested in. Like I can get most of this. I don't really need puffer fish right now. So I'm just leaving him alone and I'm thinking that we're just going to uh, keep collecting supplies until it's night and then come back here and hope for some zombies. I still can't believe I let that guy despawn and I just thought the spoon was gonna be okay in his hand. I should have known. I'm sure in the comments you guys were like, no, Red, it's not gonna stay, he'll despawn. Yes, I, uh, I figured it out. So we were back to trying to get zombies to pick up blocks and then when they don't, I have to slice them came across three creepers trying to rush me all at once, which was a little bit scary, but I took them out with my bow. Found another zombie, threw him some blocks. He didn't pick them up, so they had to go. And finally, I decided that I would just name tag the zombie, which I could have done from the beginning, but I didn't. And we nicknamed them Frankie for Frankenstein. So we started building up the walls as we waited for the next night cycle.
finally found a zombie to name tag, and then he brought a friend, so we had to get rid of the friend. Name tagged our dude Frankie, and had another friend of his stop by, and he also had to go. Then I started closing up some of the holes in the wall so that no more zombies could come, but then eventually we had a horde to deal with and slowly take out so that we only had Frankie. And I had to be very careful not to accidentally kill Frankie. When we finally just had Frankie left, I made a wall so that no one else could get through and then slowly but surely tried to lure Frankie over to our little drop shoot for them. And then eventually we finally got them to go down in our little hole. So then we could finally build up our pagoda. Enjoy the time lapse. All right, everyone, our Iron Farm Pagoda is done and decorated. And here's what we have. From the outside, we just decorated with a bunch of the vines. We use leaves to top our roof and kind of have them draped over the edges. I also decided to use some of the iron blocks, both hanging from iron chains and actually just placed on the corners just to kind of let people know that this is actually the Iron Farm. All of our iron will come from here. And then of course we're using the new big pots from 1.20. We used some netherrack to texture our mangrove roof. And then we just have lanterns and all the little corner bits. And all the way around we just kind of put little stacks of iron blocks just so that people know this is our iron farm and just to kind of decorate around it. We obviously have a little cherry blossom tree which sometimes, guys, how these spawn, like, growing like this just doesn't make sense to me. So we are gonna fix this tree and make it look a little bit more, uh, normal. Because no, no tree has that type of a bend in it most of the time. It just looks a little strange to me. But I do love the particles. But that is the outside of what it looks like. We've just got some glowberries kind of decorated in here as well. But this is the inside. Now, of course, we've got our iron blocks hanging from our chains and just stacked up in corners. We've got the big pots on both sides, and we just used glowberry little pots with flowers and mushrooms. We added an amethyst. We've got vines. I think the glowberries add a really nice touch. We've got our furnace and our crafting tables in here and some chests. We've got a little bed and of course we've got some bookshelves with the new chiseled bookshelves and added some books inside in case people want to do some research on the iron farm and how all that works. But this is what our iron farm pagoda looks like on the interior and I think it looks really cute. The only thing that it's really missing is it doesn't have the spore blossom particles. So let's go find one quick. And we drop all the way down. There we go. And there's one right there. Gonna just quick grab some coal. I think decorating with some raw iron blocks would also look really cool. So we're gonna grab some of these guys as well. And there's the spore blossom. So if I just drop that down. Okay, perfect. Now we just drop back down and perfect. We then found a second spore blossom, but accidentally dropped it down into a dark cave. So of course we had to go retrieve it. 
Okay, so I've bridged from our area all the way over to here so I can jump down in the water and then I've collected up blocks along the way so that I can at least tower back up with the tough and the deep slate. And I think this should be pretty good. It kind of seems like there's light on the ground there, so maybe that's where I've been before. But there's the spore blossom that we want to pick up. So that's what we're aiming for in this situation. So we need to have two spore blossoms as a run. But uh, let's, uh, let's do this. We've got our sword. We've got our food in our hand. And here we go. Oh, hi, you had a sword, didn't you? Okay, spore blossom, there we go. Perfect, we're just gonna light this up. Perfect, okay, we're doing good. Ooh, those are the creepers. This is great, okay, so far so good. Just light it up quick. Okay, and that was all of them. We have our two spore blossoms. Oh, I actually know where I am. Oh, this is so cool. This is by our mine shaft. What do you know? And if people want the cords for my mine shaft, you can just look at the cords on the screen and that'll get you to the mine shaft area. Just right over in this area. But honestly, while I'm here, let's get a few of these spore blossoms, shall we? Might as well, right? I mean, we're here. And got the fifth one, perfect. Okay, I think that's good for now, but uh, ooh, diamonds, Never mind. I saw diamonds, we're getting the diamonds. Beautiful. Okay, we're getting at least two, I like it. Oh, we get three ore, yay! Oh my gosh, yes. Love that for us, okay. There we go. Perfect, we got six. And now we go and we stack up. Oh, and I just heard a baby. Oh, yep. Oh, and the baby has a sword. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I got out of there. All right, and we are back up by our little farm pagodas. And let's add our spore blossom into the center. We don't need this lantern. And there we go, and with shaders on, and our spore blossom giving us the particles. They're definitely one of my favorite things to add into my Minecraft worlds because I just like how it adds some kind of movement to the worlds. I think it adds a lot. All right, I added some of the stone iron ore on this side and then on the other side, I added some of the deep slate iron ore and I think it looks super cool, especially with the complimentary shaders on making the ores glow. It looks so pretty. But now that we have the little particle effects going, this is perfect. Next, we're going to work on cleaning up some of these paths because I really don't like how the podzol looks mixed in with the grass. I just would rather have it be grass and path blocks. So we're gonna work on cleaning up our paths next. So let's get into it. For the paths between the iron farm, skelly farm, and our bridge, we just used some path blocks and coarse dirt and kept it simple, but I still think it adds a lot. Next, I spent some time adding some dark oak slabs in between all of our different layers, just so that it would be a little bit easier to be walking up and down our paths. All right, I have fully decorated our paths. We added some leaves to the edges and I think it adds a lot. I also added the slab so that it makes it a little easier to walk up. And I did that on the other side as well. Now, the other part that I want to quickly change out is adding in some of these full green bamboo blocks into our perimeter, kind of like we have on the trail paths on the other side by our crop fields. So we're gonna go grab a little bit of the green bamboo and then we're gonna go and collect some bees and go searching for some bees so that we can start breeding them up back here and eventually we'll make a cute little apiary for them. But we need to find them first and have enough to make an apiary worth it. So once we get the green bamboo, place that in, we're gonna go looking for some little bee friends. Okay, and with that, we've added in our green bamboo to our little trail edges. 
and I think it makes it come together with this area a lot more since the green bamboo is kind of what we're using for our little uh, farms area. Now let's go to sleep since it's dark outside and then we're gonna go find some bees. I also just realized I had my armor toggled on this whole time. I accidentally hit the button and I've been so used to just wearing my armor that I didn't even realize that I had my armor on the whole time because I'm just so used to seeing this lately because we didn't have the armor hidden mod. But he's off. I'm safe. I'm armored, but I'm, I'm safe. So we're, we're gonna just walk around, go back to spawn area since that's where I saw some bees. But we're gonna take the nether route because that village that's by spawn does happen to have some bees nearby it. So that's where we're gonna go collect our little bees from. But we're grabbing our golden helmet to keep the piglins off of us and then going into the nether. Okay, and there's a hog in there. So I just need to be careful. Okay, you don't see me. You don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me. Yes, you see me, but I'm gonna run quicker than you can get to me. Okay, we are back at the village. Our little villagers are still doing good. Now, I'm pretty sure, okay, yes, so there's a beehive right here. So I kind of wanna wait till evening and the bees will come back to their hives before I take them, but I'm gonna place a campfire down by this one so that I am going to be able to harvest the honeycomb because once we harvest the honeycomb, <gasps> yes, okay. We're gonna be able to make candles because we have our spider spawner as well. So we're gonna have unlimited candles once we make a little bee farm. I'm gonna move the campfires because the bees are hurting themselves. That was scary. We're gonna use our crafting table and make some trapdoors so that these dudes don't end up hurting themselves on these campfires. So we're gonna go like so. Okay guys, it's almost time for bedtime. If you wanna, you know, go in your beehive, look at the sun, it's going down. You see that? Yep, look at that, it's going down. You're gonna go in your bed. Oh, there's one. There we go, there we go, okay. <gasps> look at that, total bee location, let's go. Move a bee's nest with three bees inside it using silk touch. <gasps> Yay, okay, we've got our first bee nest. Now I'm gonna sleep and go find some more. Sniper. Okay, we found a, another little bee nest. Now I don't know if there's actually bees in this one or not, but there's definitely some honey. So we're just going to use our silk touch and grab this one and grab the campfire as well. There we go. All right, here's another one with some bees around it. So we're going to set up our usual little campfire. I'm going to make sure that I use a trap door so they don't get hurt. Perfect. And we'll take some honeycomb and we'll wait until they actually go into their little hive. Decided to start breeding up some more bees so that we would have more to bring back home with us. Then bred up some more, grabbed some honeycomb, then collected up the hives one by one at night. Oh, are you kidding me? The one giant hole in the ground is where the honey goes down. Okay, and I heard the bees inside their nests. So now we have a total of seven bee nests. So I think that's pretty good to head on home. And we're just going to leave these in a chest for now because I don't want them to escape and wander off or have anything happen to them. So our bees will just go in our foliage greenery box. And I am curious to take some string and some honeycomb and look at this, we can make candles. You know, let's go add some into our iron farm real quick cause I think they would be pretty vibey. So for candles, I am choosing to make them gray, light gray and white just because it will fit our little iron farm theme very nicely. Let's go put them up. All right, we've got all of our candles. Now let's do two dark grays right here. We'll do two of the light grays right here. And let's do the white ones right there. 
Okay, perfect. Now let's throw on some shaders, shall we? And there we go with our candles in here. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love adding the candles. They just add so much. It's so cozy in here. This is a great spot to AFK. As long as you don't listen to the iron golems dying, uh, it's fine. Now, the last thing we're going to do in today's episode is name our little gray parrot from your comments. Also, I just have to say complimentary shaders at night is so beautiful with the northern lights and the stars. It's so magical and pretty. Ugh. I love it so much. So the name I chose for our parrot is going to be Arashi, which means storm in Japanese. So thank you to those of you that suggested this name. Let's go name tag them. Okay, little dude, you officially have a name. My YouTube community named you. Well, you don't know what that is, but they're, they're cool people. But they gave you a name, and your name is now Arashi. There we go. There he is, all named and cute. So everybody... Meet Arashi. And now with our lovely iron farm made, some cozy little paths created, a bunch of bee nests found, and our parrot named Arashi. That is all the time I have for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed all the adventures we got up to in today's episode. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like, comment below some other fun build ideas you think we should do in our Japanese inspired area, because I really like how it's coming together so far with everything. So let me know what else you'd like to see here, and I'll see you next time. 